Hello, everyone. Welcome to Warsaw.js. Uh, we've already had one interesting talk. I hope you have energy to listen to another one. Do you? Yeah, 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 yeah that's nice. OK, so uh, some of you uh, probably know me. Uh, this is the third time I have a pleasure to speak at uh, Warsaw.js. Uh, for those who don't, my name is Tomek. Uh, I uh, work at Cybercom Poland as a uh, interface architect. I design and uh, implement uh, big applications for uh, financial sector. And yeah, I do some presentations and workshops and blah, blah, blah. And uh, enough about me. So the title of today's presentation is Enterprise Interface Architecture JSON Schema. So it's uh, like divided into two parts. It's the enterprise thing and the JSON schema thing. And I would like to begin with asking uh, who knows what is JSON schema already? Hands up. OK, so it's just few people. And is there anyone who has been using JSON schema? Nobody. Ah, there is. There are two people. So more or less, you are um, like the perfect audience for me. I can, I can tell you uh, some of my experience related to JSON schema. OK, so uh, how about the enterprise interface architecture thing? So a few months ago, I wrote to uh, Warsaw JS organizers that I would like to talk about big applications and uh, to share some of my experience. And um, when they uh, accepted my talk, I started listing all the things I would like to say that relate to big applications. And it happened that it's just lists of tens of like different things and it's pretty impossible to uh, talk about all of them at once so I needed to uh, split it into some parts and the most important thing that I want to uh, start today is uh, the data structures because this is the fundamental thing of each application is the data structures that uh, the components can talk to that can process and this is the the, the most important thing in, in my opinion yeah and um, if I'm lucky, then there would be um, some other presentations. Maybe this will become a cycle. OK, never mind. Um, today, I want to start with uh, recalling what is actually a JSON schema. Uh, sorry, what is actually the JSON format? Uh, what are the pros and cons of the format? And uh, yeah, what uh, we can do with it? Uh, then I would like to discuss what are the schemas? What is a schema? What is the aim of using such thing? And what are the when uh, is it uh, good to use to use it? Finally, when we combine the JSON and the schema word, we get JSON schema. So this is the main point of today's presentation. Uh, this is a tool that all this presentation is about. And finally, in the end, I would like to show uh, the most uh, like impressing uh, part. This is the uh, demonstration of some of the tools that rely on the JSON schema. So this will be a practical application of, uh, of what we can do with the tool. OK, so we will start with, uh, with the beginning of the JSON. And who knows this guy? OK, so who is he? Douglas Crockford. Yeah, you all win five points. <laughs> OK, so uh, he, um, people argue whether he is the creator of uh, JSON or whether he just, uh, uh, or whether he is not. But uh, it's pretty sure that uh, he is the guy that made JSON format popular. And now JSON is uh, the most uh, frequently used format for data exchange in the web. So um, JSON. Uh, actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So this is a syntax for defining uh, plain objects in JavaScript, just plain data. And uh, in fact, this is really easy. Uh, there is just a few steps we need to uh, follow. Um, JSON is uh, used for defining object literals. And as we all know, array is an object as well. So we can define objects and arrays using this, um, using this format. And the values um, that are included in the JSON might be either a string, which has to be enclosed with the uh, parentheses, 
a number which is uh, treated as a float I or um, a constant, and there are three uh, possible values. And these are the Boolean types and the null. Yeah, and um, JSON allows us to nest structures like objects inside objects, and arrays inside arrays, and like arrays inside objects, and, and so on and so on. And finally, it is really flexible. Uh, there are no rigid rules we need to follow to define things, like we can define object inside object inside object, and there is just no limitation. We can just put whatever we want, as long as this conforms to the syntax. So this is all about JSON. And just to uh, mention one thing, JSON comes from uh, JavaScript, it's uh, JavaScript object notation natural, but it's not used in JavaScript only. In fact, it is used by uh, all of the popular languages, all of the most popular languages. I'm pretty sure that um, the favorite language of each of you is listed somewhere around here, and it's probably JavaScript, <laughs> right? And yeah, so JSON is like, um, is um, universal for a uh, universal format for data exchange. So we may uh, have a quiz. We will see. We will check uh, if a given, um, if a given uh, string is a, a valid JSON. Okay, so I will give an example and you will say whether this is a valid JSON or not. Okay, so let's get it going. Is this a valid JSON? Yeah, correct. How about this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about this? No. Why? No. Yes, the uh, A and B key uh, is not enclosed in th with the parentheses. How about this one? Yeah. Yes, it's good. And how about this one? No. Because? Yeah, it depends on the implementation, but mainly it should be the double uh, quotes. Okay, how about this one? So this is becoming problematic. Invalid, yeah, because the key should be a string. And yeah, by the way, if you type this thing inside a uh, JavaScript browser console, it will accept uh, almost everything it will uh, it will accept uh, things like things like that one and why is that uh, yes exactly it is valid JavaScript it is not valid JSON just to let you know this is not the same thing although JSON uh, derives from JavaScript okay so how about this one Who is for yes? And who is for no? Okay, so more people are for no, and the correct answer is no. Why? Sorry? Yes, exactly. What is undefined, actually? It's JavaScript, yeah. So what is, what is the difference between null and undefined? Who said this? Uh, exactly, exactly, this is the, the right answer. So uh, null is a value, it's just something empty, and undefined is just nothing. So for example, if you want to uh, simulate that you pass no parameters uh, to a function, you don't pass null, you pass undefined. So this is the, uh, the difference. And undefined is something JavaScript related, it's not JSON. Okay, so how about this array? It's valid, yeah. And how about this one? Yeah. Who is for yes and who is for no? Uh, who is for yes, okay, and who is for no? Okay, so it's like a few people and few people here. Um, why no? Okay, so how about this one? I will uh, wait with the uh, answer for a while. So how about this one? 
who is for valid? Okay, and who is for no, Un invalid? Okay, so the answer is it depends. <laughs> because the first uh, specification, the RFC 7159, uh, says that uh, the atomic values, like the string, the Warsaw JS hallelujah, or the true, uh, it is not an object, just as you said, right? Uh, this is not a valid JSON, but the ECMA 404 uh, standard uh, states that it's, uh, it's valid. So this is why if you type uh, json.stringify and give, for example, a value true or the string Warsaw JS hallelujah, you will get this thing. So this is uh, conforming to the ECMA 404. And, ah, okay, so this is just uh, another example of this. There should be an integer, sorry. Okay, so we've got the quiz, and yeah, mainly um, JSON is not a programming language. Uh, it's not a language after all, it's just a format that is used for data serialization. And uh, its alternatives are XML, which I'm pretty sure you're familiar with, and uh, YAML. Yeah, this is just, um, all of them might be used alternatively. Okay, so let's talk about uh, programming languages that rich people work in. Let's talk about, let's talk about Java, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the thing with Java, actually is that it uh, relies heavily on XML format. Now, it's, uh, now it tries to use annotations more and not to make all those heavy XML stuff. Anyway, um, I'm pretty sure that we're all familiar with XML, but just to uh, make a small uh, recall, we can just define our custom parameters, just like this order person, or like ship order, give either attributes, um, or other elements, nest them just as we can do with the JSON, and we can define like a ship order that will have an order person element and the ship to element, and the ship to element uh, consists of uh, the name, address, city, and country elements, and so on. So we can just do the same stuff as uh, we can do with JSON, but this is just an alternative uh, format. What I want to say here is not really about XML, but about the XSD. Who has heard about XSD? Okay, so pretty much people. So this is uh, XML schema definition. So this is where schema comes in. So uh, XSD is a format that defines, it's a, it's a meta format for XML that defines what might be included inside an XML. XSD is uh, also an XML, so this is why we call it a meta definition, because it's defining uh, what, it's, it's an XML file that defines what might be included in other XML files. So if we take a look at this ship to uh, element in the previous slide, we will see that it consists of the name, address, city, and country uh, elements, sub-elements, and the fr XSD fragment for this, um, the XSD for this fragment looks like this. So uh, this is just defining an XS element that is named ship2, and it's defined as complex type, which is a sequence, and it consists of uh, four elements. So it's the name, address, city, and country. So this is just uh, how. And, ah, and Java relies on both XML and XSD a lot. So this is just to make sure that uh, the content of an XML file, for example, a configuration for a server or a configuration for an application, will have exactly what we want it to have. Because if some like crap or other bullshit comes in, then, um, then the whole application will break. So this is how we want to make it um, like more rigid, more uh, under control. And this is the whole, uh, this is the whole XSD uh, for the XML we've been uh, uh, looking before. So it, 
yeah, mainly it, it's not important to analyze uh, this fragment. Um, yeah, but we can just see that there is a, a ship order element that has a sequence of other elements that is nested, and so on and so on. So this is about uh, Java. And if we take a look at JavaScript, uh, comparing to Java, JavaScript is dynamically typed. And this means that JavaScript natively can't check the element types. And in fact, it's not something that we uh, should do a lot because this is, the, um, this is the idea of dynamically typed languages. And so is JSON. We can't state that there should be a number or there should be a string or an object or array. J neither JavaScript nor JSON doesn't uh, um, provide us a mechanism for doing this. And actually, this becomes a problem because when we have big applications, so the, and this is about the enterprise applications, after all, uh, when we've got big applications, we've got tons of code that uh, lots of different people will work on in different time and probably in different uh, cities or different countries. Um, different people with different ideas will work on the same code base. And we've got no compile time checking of types. So if we make a mistake somewhere and we pass a string instead of number and we do a plus operator and we will have some kind of unexpected behavior, we're fucked up, basically. So this is the problem with JavaScript that we need to be aware of. And this is what may happen if we change a JSON attribute, for example, from a string into a number or whatever, and we, or we just change a string into an object, the whole application may crash because uh, we will go into, uh, let's say, an error like uh, accessing, un uh, accessing um, a field of undefined and JavaScript throws error and uh, stops uh, this line of code. Yeah. So um, when we take a look about, uh, at uh, communication between uh, different components, then we see that, for example, if we take a look at an API and a single page application, they both talk to each other, uh, we notice that, in fact, this is a rigid structure. Uh, when the single page application um, fires a request, this request consists of very specific attributes which the API expects it to get. And the other way around as well. Um, when the API uh, sends the response, uh, the single page application will uh, expect a rigid specific structure to get. And the question is, uh, what if the structure changes from one of the sites? For example, uh, there is a task or a project to be done uh, among different people, and somebody will change the structure on one side, and he will not do it on the other side. So we've got, we've got a problem, and the application crashes as well, uh, because somebody changed the API response structure, and the interface may break. So this is where the schemas comes in. Um, just as XSD is a schema for XML, uh, the same way we will have JSON schema for uh, JSON. Yeah, and uh, some of you may uh, claim that you've done like uh, lots and lots of applications and you've had uh, completely no problem uh, with uh, controlling JSON um, content because you are the developers, or you might be developers of uh, both uh, API and the front end itself. But in fact, um, if, uh, if you work in big projects and in big teams, uh, it'll, it is like 100% sure that uh, it will happen that uh, somebody will make a, a change that you will not be expecting and the thing may break. And the, um, the challenge here is to prevent such things from being deployed uh, to production or to development or to tests. So the, the challenge is just to uh, make some kind of a technical um, like approach to uh, solve all those problems before they uh, are um, actually done. So um, just to finish this part, what may we validate? 
So this is um, about API communication, of course. For example, if you want to uh, re uh, return customer details or user details or whatever, um, we may expect that there would be some given attributes like first name, last name, uh, age, uh, email, and so on and so on. Um, but if we change the structure and we replace the first name and last name with full name, then we need to do the same on the interface and we need to make it synchronized, both sides. So this is about API communication. Uh, we may also have some configuration for the application. For example, um, what is the URL of the API that the interface will talk to? Or what is the name of the CSS schema that will be used to uh, color the application or just to provide all the styles? Or what uh, name or other meta tags or titles and so on shall be used? So this might be used in the configuration. And if we want to keep it in sync uh, with the build process, for example, we might use it, uh, we might define it in JSON. And the last thing is that um, when we've got like big applications, uh, there might be some internal application definitions that might be used. For example, if we want to um, pass some uh, definitions into an Angular directive or uh, some other components that we want to uh, provide mm, some like specific uh, structures, we might also define them in JSON, pass them to this component, and we can make sure that this uh, JSON is in sync with what the component expects. So this is just the same approach, but in different examples. Yeah, so the thing is that uh, everything uh, might be validated, in fact. Okay, so this uh, is uh, the the most interesting part. So it's the JSON schema part, validate me. So just as XSD is uh, validation for XML, then JSON schema is for JSON. JSON schema, in fact, is just a specification. Um, I'm not gonna walk through all the points because it's uh, it's very long and like uh, there are lots of details. I just want to give you a uh, quick uh, overview of uh, what is this all um, like, mm, what is the whole idea? Yeah, so uh, JSON schema is a JSON used to define JSON. It's a meta definition, just as we uh, said already. So the easiest example of a JSON schema is this one. It's just an object with the type attribute that defines a Boolean and an example value that conforms to this schema is just true. Another easy example is a type string, which might be, for example, the value or so JS. A slightly more, exa uh, more uh, complex example is an uh, integer, which has minimum and maximum, maximum um, attributes defined. There is also a multiple of and exclusive minimum, so I think it's pretty obvious what all of them mean for us. Um, for each of the basic types like boolean, string, uh, integer, object, and array, there are some different uh, attributes we might define, and all of them are defined in the specification. I'm not gonna walk through all of them, but I hope you get the main point that th this is just uh, defining what should be the uh, allowed values of objects. Yeah, and an example value is just 605. Okay, so going forward, we've got an array example. So we've got a type array. There is also uh, min items, it's five. Uh, there might be also max items. And finally, uh, we've got items attribute, which is an enum. Uh, that might accept the values green, blue, and yellow, and the example uh, object that conforms to this JSON schema is just green, blue, green, green, yellow, green, because this is just the minimum number of items has to be five, and this is six, so, th so this conforms to. And just one more example. 
um, we've got a title here. A title is a uh, description which is not really used to um, check any data. This is, let's say, some kind of uh, documentation for us. And the type is object. We've got three properties defined. So there is first name, which is a string. There is last name, which is also a string. And there is age, which is uh, type integer, which is minimum zero. Not to allow uh, negative values, of course. So an, uh, an object that conforms to this schema is, let's say, first name John, last name Lennon, age 40. Um, yeah, and you can also see uh, in the, at the bottom of, the, of this example that there is additional properties false. So this is a special attribute that is used for objects um, that, um, that says that if we wanted to add, let's say, a city or country to this uh, John Lennon object, uh, this would not conform to this. Because um, here in this uh, definition of the JSON, we don't have anything like city or country or whatever. So only those attributes are accepted. Yeah, and additionally, there is the required attribute which says that those two have to be included. So um, we can see that this, uh, the second example, Paul McCartney, which doesn't have the H, because he's still alive. Um, it's also uh, a valid uh, JSON regarding to this JSON schema. Yeah, because um, we can uh, interpret that the age attribute is just optional here. Yeah, so mainly this is, um, these are the easy examples. Um, there, is, there are also some uh, more um, complex things, just like, uh, uh, ref, one of, all of, any of. This is a possibility to um, include a sub-schema inside other schema. For example, if we want to have a very big complex structure, we may uh, split it into different files. Um, or if we want to have a small schema, like something easy, and we want to share it between different bigger structures, we can just put it into other file and load it uh, like a reference. We can also use things like one of, which is defined here, which is an array, uh, or all of and any of, which I guess, um, which I guess you, you, you know what this uh, is used for. Do? <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, this is especially uh, useful when we have dynamic uh, JSON values and we want to have them all like uh, under control. We, we can state that uh, this might be one of the schemas we know, or it can be any of the schemas. Uh, it's here. Or if we want just to everything to be, um, to be uh, conforming to the subschema. So mainly this is uh, all about the schema itself. And let's talk about the tool stack. Uh, the most impressive thing here. So we will start with the JSON schema online generator. In fact, this is uh, very uh, useful when starting with the JSON schema. Um, can you see the font from here, or is it too small? Is it okay? Okay, so... Um, Normally the page looks like this, but due to the low resolution, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so um, on, the, uh, on the left, we've got a JSON uh, definition. This is just the JSON uh, that you get from somewhere. For example, if you uh, walk into a new project and you can see a wild, crazy API that you have no idea of what it returns, then you may just uh, put some um, JSON values here. We'll just, let's make it smaller. And it just checks whether the JSON is valid or not. And we can generate the schema with the blue button. And we will see the fully generated schema for this, um, for this value. We can also, um, let's say, uncheck some of those uh, some of those uh, attributes to make it a little smaller. 
Okay, so here we can see that this is just uh, uh, like the specification of the schema. The ID is used for references, so this is an object. This object may have properties. The property is an address, and no other addresses are allowed. And the address object, um, its uh, ID, which, is, which also might be used for references, is uh, address, it's an object, it has properties uh, like street address and the city. And the, one, the first one is a string, and the second one is also a string. So this is what we can see here. If we add something like, like age, and we generate the schema, we will see that there is something called age as well. Or we can uh, force the required. If we want to have, uh, for example, a definition that will require some attributes to be defined, we can uh, regenerate the schema. And we will see the required uh, attribute, uh, both in the nested uh, address object and in the outer uh, object, the main one. So um, this is JSONSchema.net. It's a very useful, um, very useful site, especially in the beginning, uh, when beginning to yeah, deal with the JSON schema. Uh, the second tool is a Node.js based JSON schema validator. So the thing is that uh, JSON schema is a specification. It's not an implementation. This is just a specification that might be used by different vendors to provide different tools. One of them is the, uh, the tool I use for validation. Um, the idea is very easy. We just uh, use, uh, we just define a schema just the one as we've seen before, and we just give some JSON and we just check whether uh, this conforms to the schema or not. And if it doesn't, it will throw uh, errors. Okay, so this is the difficult part, the demo part. I'll just use the mic. Okay. Okay, so, so the first example, the JSON schema one.js. By the way, the, the whole, all the files that are um, displayed here are in the repository that uh, the link to will be included in the last slide. So, uh, yeah, you will just have the access to this code. Yeah, so the JSON schema is a uh, node package that we may just install and require, and we create a new validator. The instance is just a number four. The schema is just type number. And we just see whether this is OK. And we expect it to be. So we run node JSON schema one. And the, the console output here is that instance four, schema type number, property path instance, errors empty. If the errors uh, array is empty, the thing is valid. So this is how this tool works. And we'll see another example, JSON schema two, which is uh, slightly more complicated. We're just requiring and uh, creating the validator. And here we will have the address schema. Um, so this is just a object that, is, that consists of the lines attribute, the zip, uh, city, and country. Uh, attributes, and the country is the only attribute that is required here. Um, so this is the address schema, and it is, its ID is simple address. And there is also uh, another schema object, which is the simple person uh, schema, and it has the name property, um, address property, which is referenced by the schema that we've seen just um, uh, before, and there is votes, uh, which should be type integer and minimum one. And we've got an example 
uh, object, that is Barack Obama. Uh, we will add the address uh, subschema uh, to the validator, and we will just see whether this thing conforms. And it doesn't, as we can see. So um, we will have the instance, which is just exactly what was uh, in the file. And we've got the schema, and we've got property path instance. And the errors, value, uh, errors array is not empty. It says that the property instance votes is not of type integer, and the uh, actual value is lots, and it was uh, expected integer. And when we take a look at the code, we'll actually see that uh, the Barack Obama's votes is a string lots, but the expected value was of type integer. So this is just an example of how we can uh, see that something uh, doesn't conform. And the uh, practical application of this module is that uh, when, uh, when somebody changes a JSON uh, configuration file, for example, or the um, API uh, uh, resource um, structure, and we don't expect a different structure to be uh, um, returned, then we will be immediately notified if we use such tool in our automatic tests. And this is something that is really extremely useful in big applications, that uh, it's not only about programming, it's not only about knowing the algorithms and the data structures, it's also about synchronizing the teams and synchronizing the structures. Okay, so this was Node.js based JSON schema validator. Now we will move to mocks and uh, fake data. Uh, I've already given a talk about mocking the API, um, so this will be just a mm, continuation of, of the thing. Uh, basically, uh, do you know what is mocking? Okay, so is there anybody who doesn't know what is a mock? Okay, so everybody knows. So um, the thing, uh, the useful thing about JSON schema and mocking is that we may use the JSON specification, uh, the JSON schema specification, to generate fake data. We may say that we will have the first name, uh, which is a string, last name, which is a string, and the age, which is an integer, to generate 1,000 of such objects, for example. And this is extremely useful, especially. Um, when we do have lots of objects and we do have lots of structures and we need to uh, expand or like um, make the structures bigger, for example, we want to add a new city attribute. And if we have, like, we all need mocks to see how the interface works or to test some things and so on. If we have like mock file that has 1,000 elements and we need to add one simple plain value, which is just a city string, then we need to go through all the thousand objects and add this uh, attribute. This will take us time, this will take us nerves, and um, yeah, it will be really extremely boring. Uh, so um, we may use JSON schema to generate those values, and there will be some tools that do it instantly. It's just a minute and you get brand new marks. So the first uh, tool I would like to show you is the online JSON generator. This generator, can you see this uh, left column here, mainly? This is not really um, like important to, to see all the code. I may make it a little bigger. So here we've got uh, an object that has the ID underscore ID attribute that has some strange um, syntax like object ID function. There is index, which is uh, index ID, uh, index function, uh, GUID, and the is active, which is a bool, and so on and so on. And there is gender and company and email and phone and so on. This tool is uh, really nice if we uh, want to have uh, lots of JSON data like on the fly instantly and we can use it in the browser. We just click generate 
and we will see uh, lots of lots of data being uh, generated on the fly. But the problem with this tool is that, ah, and we can copy and paste it into a, a JSON uh, file somewhere in our project. Um, the problem with this tool is that, uh, at least I haven't heard of it, is that it's just browser-based. There is uh, no NPM uh, module, mm, at least I, I don't know uh, about uh, any of, of it. And uh, I don't know what are the functions that might be um, used here. Like, there is no documentation, you can just generate it, copy and paste into a file. But anyway, if you want to have something like really fast, and this is, this is quite cool. Uh, another um, generator, which is the same uh, class tool, is uh, Node.js based fake data generator. Um, and it is called JSON Schema Faker. And I would like to um, make a small introduction to the uh, Faker.js and Chance.js libraries. Is there anyone who knows Faker.js or Chance.js? Okay, so there are two people that use the mock data. Yeah, these are very cool tools. Okay, so I'll just uh, show you what Faker and what Chance do. We will need just the console. Okay, so uh, we require the uh, the Faker module. Okay, so when I type Faker, there would be like lots of lots of things. Uh, Faker is a uh, very easy yet very useful library uh, that is used to uh, generate data of specific type and of specific domain. For example, if I want to have a city, this is a string, and if I want to have a first name, this is also a string. But a city and a first name is not the same, right? And a country is also a string, but it's not the same. So this is just a very extremely uh, easy tool that is used to generate like contextual data. So for example, we may uh, generate a name. Uh, Faker is um, based on namespaces. So Faker.name is a namespace for some generators that are used among the names. So we've got first name, last name, find name, and blah, blah, blah. I think I've got some terminal problems here. I am unable to type anything. I will try to restart this. No, it doesn't work. Try to, hopefully, Windows will allow me to write a little bit more. Okay, so this is faker.name, and faker.name.firstName, and this is a function. So we've got Luna name, or Raphael name, or Eugene name, or Lazaro, Hina, or Emerson, or whatever. <laughs> or we can type just last name. So, well, this is some kind of special string. So, um, Icon, Erdman, Bauch, Walter, and so on. And we may take the, just the full name, which in Faker is called the find name. So this is Crystal Wenner Jr. or Tatiana something. And we may just um, we may just generate this fake data. Um, we may also in Faker we may also uh, define the locales. And um, Successfully, there is also Polish translation. So now, if we define the um, find name, the full name for the Polish, we will have Arkadiusz Gołębiewski or Eliza Pawlikowski, Lucian Karpiński, 
Boris Matusak. This is uh, very easy and I'm pretty sure that each of you could uh, write such library on its own, but it supports really lots of generators and it is really useful and it is used by the JSON schema to define the contextual data. Uh, just the alternative to Faker, which has some drawbacks, is uh, chance.js. Uh, Faker is just an object that has some attributes and functions uh, assigned to it. Uh, chance is just a function that needs to be uh, instantiated. But afterwards, we get uh, exactly the same uh, things. Unfortunately, as far as I remember, chance is not um, internationalized or localized but its documentation is a lot better and the library is maintained a lot better. So uh, more or less I would, I would um, uh, recommend to use chance instead of faker. So there is also age or if you want to generate the IP address or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna uh, show all, all of the functions. Anyway, I'll just uh, take a look at the documentation of, of uh, those both uh, libraries. So we've got, uh, this is faker.js. You may uh, recognize it by this funny uh, image with this uh, illusionist. Okay, so we've got things like name, generating names, addresses, phones, internet stuff, some business company related things, images and some text, fake text generators like lorem ipsum, uh, the helpers for uh, random things and shuffling, date, random finance and so on, and the same for chance.js. Um, we've got some basics like bool character, floating, we've got text, we've got person, where is the age, birthday, gender, uh, name, yeah, mobile uh, section, web section, location, and so on and so on. Okay, so this is just about the um, data generators. And going back to the, um, the JSON schema faker. I've got three examples here. So uh, we begin with, um, install, uh, with requiring the JSON schema faker library uh, and we provide a schema that is an array, accepts five items and uh, the items are just uh, uh, allowed values is an enum of uh, four colors. This is the same um, structure that we have seen uh, on the slides before. And the, um, the code is just uh, calling the JSF function on the schema object, and this is just the sample object, and this is just the, the sample that has been uh, generated. And we'll just console log it. So this is what um, node has returned, so this is just an array of uh, five values. If I run it a few times, we will see that different values will be defined each time. If you want to change like minimum number of items into 25, we will see that there will be a lot of uh, other things. Um, there is also um, the JSF um, example with the faker. Um, the syntax here is not really uh, important, mainly um, we just uh, define the faker uh, or we do the same with chance and we define the name of the uh, generator. So this is, this is a schema that uh, will return name, which is the full name and an email which is generated from here. So we've got few 
examples of what might be uh, used here. And this is how we can massively uh, create fake data. And um, just to uh, mention, uh, the author uh, of the JSON schema faker library is a very cool guy, Alvaro, and uh, he accepted me as a contributor to this project and we're um, developing it together. And if you find this project interesting, uh, you're all welcome to contribute uh, as well. And just to uh, make a small uh, demonstration, there is also a uh, browser-based uh, application for this uh, JSON schema faker where we may use, um, like, we may do the same things in the browser, or just the example with the atoms. So you may just use it very fast. You don't need to write the Node.js boilerplate code to, to run it. Okay, so going forward. Uh, there is just the last tool here. Uh, that is uh, Grant JSON Schema Faker, which is a Grant plugin that uses the uh, the previous tool just to run to like um, configure it in your Grant environment so that you can um, generate uh, the exact number of uh, items you want to. So the grant configuration is really easy. You may just define the indent for the JSON if you want to. Uh, you define how many um, um, objects should be created, and you just define that the um, file that will contain the, uh, the fake objects will be built up, uh, basing on the schema file. And um, Unfortunately, I can't uh, run Grunt on this machine, but I may just show you uh, how do this uh, file look like. There are just three example files. Three example uh, Grunt runtimes. So you may just use this Grunt um, plugin, or you may write your own uh, Gulp plugin or whatever, and just use this JSON schema faker to uh, provide a specific uh, JSON objects, just as you wish. Okay, so this is uh, all about the tools and the, the, the mocking tools. And uh, yeah, going back to summarize all this JSON schema thing, um, um, yeah, mainly, uh, JSON schema is not that trendy. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some of you have just heard about JSON schema for the first time, but I think it's not trendy yet because the applications of the JSON schema are really, are really, um, really wide. JSON schema is just a meta definition, so this is a JSON files that are used to define other JSON files. Uh, the specification is used as, as a base for validating the content of the objects and it might be used to define uh, the fake generators of some complex structures. Java had uh, XSD, and now JavaScript also does it, which uh, like puts JavaScript as a more like advanced platform because we can uh, fully validate the data structures that are used among uh, projects. Uh, yeah, and the enterprise will love it because big projects uh, that are done by um, big teams spread uh, like in different cities and different countries will just um, conform to a JSON schema which is uh, tracked by a repository and you just need to, uh, to conform to the file and this is all you have to do. So this makes the, yeah, the work easier. Okay, so this is all I have prepared for today. Thank you. And just, uh, just one, one more thing. Um, if you want to uh, yeah, um, hear about some stuff, uh, I, I tweet some things so you can follow me on Twitter. And if you are interested in the code examples that have been uh, shown in this presentation, uh, you can just uh, take a look at the, at the GitHub repository. And if you have any questions, I'm open. First question here, sorry.
Okay, I have a question about uh, JSON schema types. Is it possible to define more complex type that you mentioned, for example, a uh, regular expression uh, type? Is it possible? As far as I remember, there is a pattern attribute in the specification that defines the, uh, yeah, the regular expression. It's called pattern. So you can, and uh, the JSON schema faker library supports a library that is called randexp, like random uh, expression, that uh, generates an example expression that conforms to the regular expression. So, yes. Uh, hi, well, uh, is there any JSON schema for JSON patch operations so I could validate whether the operations are Applicable to, to given. C can you repeat? Property? Is there any JSON schema? For the JSON patch. For JSON, the JSON patch operations. Patch. The, the JSON patch is the another spec. It's a JSON which defines the, the changes on JSON. So it's a, it's a diff mm -hmm. on, on a JSON. Um, well, actually, I don't know about this, so okay. sorry. <laughs> but possibly, maybe, I don't know. Okay, thanks. Okay, so hi. Uh, I don't know if that's safe to ask this question after seeing the Java slab. Uh, sorry? Okay, uh, sorry. I don't know if that's safe to ask this question after seeing the Java Batman slab, but anyway, I wanted to ask if there are uh, libraries for JSON validator in other languages just to provide the conformity between front end, front end and the back end. I side. think it's very safe to ask this question. Uh, <laughs> yes, there are. Uh, well, in fact, there is a um, JSON, JSON schema um, website. Um, I'm not pretty sure where exactly this is, but there is uh, software. This is just the official, um, official web page of the JSON schema. And there is just a section of validators. And here is JavaScript, there is Java, Python, Ruby, Perl, PHP, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you'll have lots of them. The web page is json-schema.org. Okay, thanks. So um, JSON schema, can be, you are just validating J, um, JavaScript objects. Yes. Um, have you used this? In uh, no, not only. You can just load the JSON files. Uh, like in Sure, but you can use it to validate any JavaScript object, not just not JSON specifically, right? It depends on the implementation. Uh, well, um, it should sorry. validate the JSON object. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. you want to? Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm just wondering if you've used it in runtime, if you've actually used it not part of the build, but in runtime to validate that your objects comply to a specific schema. Is it fast enough or have you not uh, used it in that scenario? I think there is no uh, like uh, clear answer for this. Um, I'm pretty sure that this would slow down the application. It depends on the, um, on the complexity and it depends on how big the, um, the objects are and how often do you do this. Um, I don't think it would be good to do it in runtime, but it's uh, definitely good to do it in the, during the build. Well, you could uh, run your application in, uh, let's say, some test mode that would validate everything, and for example, just to fire end-to-end uh, -end tests and just to see whether the JSON uh, conforms to the schema and just shut it down after the tests are finished. So I think this would be the, the right approach. All right, so that's enough questions for today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tosh. Thank you.